The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, zip code 191173, and it is colder than a gravedigger's pacuti here in Philadelphia today, but it's going to be warming up. Let's take a look at the German DAX. As you can see, we've been in a slight downtrend. We had a big ABCD form, and then we've rallied back up to the 61% retracement. Remember now, folks, we're in the holiday season, so the volume volatility will probably increase just to the fact that there's going to be less orders out there to fill some of this paper, especially as we get near the holidays. And remember, this is one of the stronger seasonal time periods for stocks in the United States is around the, the Thanksgiving and Christmas time period. And of course, it doesn't need any help given what we've been seeing lately in the market, especially with that report that we had Friday um, about the jobs report. And that was certainly put into the press in many different forms. I want to share with you a chart from uh, sent to us by our good friend Rich Anderson. It's a chart on a, uh, from one of the, uh, uh, what do you call these guys, these alpha uh, hedge fund guys. And uh, I took it off the, the list because I didn't, I didn't want you to see who it was. That way you wouldn't be bothering them. But I did have permission to send it out. This is basically a uh, chart of the cash S&P index. And what he's showing here is the negative divergence you'll see with momentum. And then he's also pointing to the fact that there's very no, there's very little fear in the market. We see that in the fact that the DAX has moved uh, very, very little. But you do see, you know, the big ABCD pattern. That's in Elliott wave form. Of course, a little different than the way we do it because we try to do it as simple as possible. But that number up there is that 1.618 level, and it's uh, very, very important. So let's remember that uh, there are a few things in the market that are uh, telling that there could be some major topping up in here. The main one, of course, is the fact that we have these incredibly big patterns that we've seen you know, over and over again that are matching up to these uh, major numbers of um, you know, 1.618 and 1.27 and all the others that we that we decided to keep a look at. And you notice we almost had that 4% correction that Tom Hugard talked about. About. We came within just 100 uh, points in, of the Dow of hitting that last Thursday, excuse me, last Tuesday after being down Monday, Tuesday, and then we were very strong Wednesday and Thursday, and then Friday it blew the socks off of everything with the Dow being up uh, 300 points. And, and a lot of that, of course, we know is related to algorithmic trading. You know, once they push it in one direction, it goes that way. This is not the way trading used to be, folks. We used to see ups and downs uh, more and more where there would be choppiness. I mean, the patterns were still the same. But the what we're seeing with these algorithmic trading things is that, you know, they are very, very uh, influential for short periods of time. So once the train gets moving in the right direction, it's a pretty interesting um, situation. So you can't stand in front of it. You have to remember that a lot of algorithmic traders don't always win. Uh, in fact, many of them don't. If you remember from Jim Simmons' uh, comments, that he's only right about 50% of the time, but boy, am I right on that 50%. So you can make money at 20% or even 10% if you handle your losses properly. And that's what most new traders don't do is they don't handle their off their 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 losses properly. They they did, first of all they trade too much, and then they use, they use their uh, stops too close. That's the main thing. Someone asked me a question over the weekend in an email. If there was one thing that you had to say that made it that made it uh, worth, you know, doing to learn to be a trader and stuff like that, what would be the one attribute that you would have to have? And you know, I really thought 
you know, long and hard about it because it's just not one thing. It's, you know, it's a lot of different things. You have to have a belief in yourself. You have to have, a, you know, you know, a, just a really strong desire to want to do that. So I, I came up with think after thinking of it for a while, the one thing and that's the thing that kept me going was was the commitment that I that I knew that once I once I saw that I could do it, even if it was just a short a short glimpse and i had that luckily with the silver stuff you know back in you know 64 65 but that was 1964 not 1864 but uh it's it's the commitment that you can do it because if you if you really have the commitment and you start to learn and stop making mistakes along the way learn from your mistakes the first mistake teaches the second mistake kills and you want to stay away from those second mistakes the ones that kill the two major killers are adding to a losing position and not using a stop, followed closely by having no idea what your risk is on a trade. And that's the only thing that you can control. So if you stop doing the bad things, eventually you're going to stumble onto something that is going to help you make money in the markets. It's that simple. And I can tell you from all the years that I spent with my dear friend, Mark Douglas, looking at all these statements that we had, we had I think over 20,000 contract or um, people that we had looked at. We didn't know their names, but we knew they we knew their trading styles that Merrill Lynch shared with uh, with Mark, and it showed that they make the same mistakes over and over again. They put their stops too close, uh, they over trade, they don't use a stop. I mean, no money management. I mean, uh, at, at huge losses, very small profits. If you stop doing that stuff, you're, you're eventually going to make it. But it takes a little bit of time, and you really want to do it. But I will tell you this with a great deal of uh, conviction that when you do get there, it's really worth it because uh, you don't have to worry about anybody, you know, signing the front of the paycheck for you anymore because uh, you'll be the one that's going to be signing the front of the paychecks because you're working for yourself. You have tremendous freedom both ways, either good or bad. You work when you want to, how you want to. You'll meet some really nice people in the world. You'll meet a few. You'll meet a few frogs, as we know, but uh, that that happens in any business. But uh, it's it's certainly worth the journey. So I hurt. I certainly hope you you stick with it if you're marginal right now. And I know the end of the year, people are looking and say, "Oh dear, what am I going to do next year?" But you can do it. One of the things that. The reason why I do this show here at TFNN is because I really care for the O'Brien family, Tom and Tommy. I met them many years ago, and I've seen what they do. They bring a lot of people in, you know, to give you some ideas. They have some really good products, and, you know, they deserve your support. So uh, I really believe that uh, that's all part of it. You learn by doing that. We have some great guests here. You know, um, I know on my show we do. And, uh, you know, sometimes they'll give you some free stuff, like we got the book from Tom Hugard, which anybody that doesn't get that book, they really are missing a good thing. But here's a here's a, a really successful guy that's bearing his soul and taking a lot of heat for it, which is not a lot of fun. But get that book. It's hello at uh, TraderTom.com, and you'll be able to get that book. And I think it would help you quite a bit. We'll have Tom as our guest here on Friday when we uh, – Take a, when we have our usual guest. Tomorrow, of course, we have none other than the wizard of Naples, Florida, Mr. Norm Winsky from Astro 10. He'll be on tomorrow. That will, oh, I think he's on the 11th. You know what? I think he's on the 11th. I'm sorry about that. Let's, uh, let's double check it. 877 927 6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've been asked to take a look at the sugar chart, and I think the best way to do it is to look at the long-term weekly here on sugar. If you notice, the low we made back in August was around $9 a pound. We rallied up to $14 a pound, and then we made a long-term, a whole year. It went from October of 2018 till October till September of 2019. It came down 78%. Uh, You'll notice that 78% level came in there. It went about 40 cents below that level, about $400, and has since rallied well over $3,000. You can see the ABCD patterns with those red thunderbolts that you can see uh, that were there during 2019. We've been talking about sugar from the bullish side uh, ever since that time. But the two things that I think are important here, first of all, if you look at the chart right now, you can see that we've been up uh, seven weeks in a row. That in itself would tell you that you're probably getting ready for some type of correction. And I would think it would start somewhere between 1321 and 1360 and then look for a pullback. The, the key point here is if you'll look at the smaller thunderbolt that occurred from August low into the October low, that exact 382 retracement, the exact number was 0.3782. That's 10 cents in sugar, $100, and away it went. And you can see it moved um, well over $1,200 in the last seven weeks. So right now, I would be watching sugar for a uh, potential short sale up here at around 1360. But uh, also, I would be looking for a little bit of a pullback because if you can get it down to about 1240, 
then you could maybe take it up to that $15 level. But it certainly looks like we're heading to $15 in sugar on the longer time frame. So that's what I'm watching uh, in the sugar market. It, it trades very easily, folks. This is something that it's good for learning how to trade because it doesn't hurt you too bad. You'll have a few uh, days where it might be a little crazy, but most of the time, you know, it's not like trading natural gas and stuff like that because that's a whole different ball game. You got a lot of things, you know, to worry about, uh, you know, if you're if you're looking at that. And since we're talking about natural gas. Let's get this up here to take a look at it here. We'll be able to see, yes, the big week. We're having the Federal Reserve, the natural order of impeachment, uh, tariffs, the IG report, and, of course, the Trump tweets, which are always uh, interesting. Uh, take a look here now, folks, at the uh, natural gas here for Ruby. Uh, here's a perfect example. Now, this is a daily chart, but you, you can see the ABCD patterns, these thunderbolts. And you can see the big one from August up into September down to October, exactly up in there. We were on this very, very closely because of that 290 level. That was a 382 retracement from, you know, way back in 2017. And what we do last night, folks, I haven't updated this yet, but I am aware of it. You'll see that last night, you'll notice the low of uh, 20. 2.16. That was a 1.27 expansion of that whole move. Now, that was hit last night. Uh, it was down over 11, 1100 bucks overnight. Uh, we're trading it around uh, 223 right now. I believe that's the last time I checked. But uh, it left a pretty big gap in here. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see. That gap comes in at around the uh, 227 level. So this is uh, this is not a time. It's a very low risk buy here because if it gets below 216, you know you're uh, you're, you're certainly going to be uh, looking at uh, something a whole lot lower, possibly a double bottom down at 2 204 that we've been at before. But that was a big move uh, to the downside, and so it was probably news related. You know, some political thing and natural gas, they certainly have natural gas all over uh, Europe and stuff. So there might have been some type of a, a law. I don't know. But that's uh, I don't know if it's an exhaustion gap or not, Marshall. It certainly could be. But for, for two reasons, one of all, first of all, it comes in the middle of the night. It started Sunday night uh, around, uh, that was around 2, let me see, 2, 3, it's around 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, New York time is when it started, because uh, the alerts went off, and because I was watching the support at 227 to see if it was going to hold, and it went through it, you know, like melted butter, and that meant that the uh, market was uh, going to go a lot lower, and of course it did, you know, through the rest of the night, but it could be an exhaustion gap. We won't know that until the end of the day today for two reasons. That's when we'll check the open interest to see if there was too much uh, going on. But that's, uh, you know, natural gas is good to trade, but boy, folks, it's not for the faint of heart. It's the pork bellies of the uh, energy market because it really jumps around, but it trades nicely off the patterns and that makes it uh, pretty good. Uh, Mr. Z has posted some uh, really good stuff in the room uh, about the uh, copper. And Copper, he's been very bullish that for some time. And uh, they gave Mr. Z a wonderful Christmas present on Friday as Copper was up about nine cents. That was while uh, gold was heading into the uh, heading towards the equator on the downside. And you'll notice here that we have this potential ABCD pattern here uh, in the uh, copper and that's a very big one the reason why is that was just barely a 382 retracement uh, at the 262 level we had a nice pull back at uh, 262 and now we've rallied uh, 13 cents here nine of it in one day but the uh, objective of this could be 286 without uh, too much uh, without too much trouble so this is a big move in copper it had a big increase in open interest so that's telling you that um, dr. copper is saying that the the economy is looking good, so we'll see. Oh, Paul Volcker died. Son of a gun. I'm very sorry to hear that. I, I am. Thanks for posting that, David. Gosh, I liked him very much. Boy, I he was at my talk in uh, at the foundation.
Organization for the Study of Cycles back in 1988 down in Orange County, and it was a real pleasure to meet him. Six foot seven, just a really nice, oh, there, there, all the stuff is right there. Yeah, a nice guy. You, you, we, owe, we owe this guy so much, folks. Let me explain to you why. When Carter put him in, and remember, Jimmy Carter, you know, not many people attribute him to doing too much, but that was the one thing that Carter did is that when Volcker came in, he made the decision that he was going to stop inflation. We had T-bonds uh, selling at 13 percent. We had T-bills selling at 13 percent. In other words, a T-bond nowadays is selling for, what, 160, roughly? They were selling for 53. That was the 8 percent bond. And, you know, it was—let uh, and, and non. Let me look at—just to give you an example. They, in, during that time in 1980, you could buy tax-free AAA— uh, muni bonds, uh, tax-free, AAA um, muni bonds for 17%. Tax-free. That means if you're in a 50% tax bracket, you're getting 34% on those bonds. The problem was they were callable, and it only lasted for a very short period of time. Well, Volcker put the kibosh on that. The first thing he did is he changed how they uh, measured the inflation. He really did. He changed. Oh, we're going to, well, let me see. We're going to take out food and energy because that really doesn't uh, uh, matter to inflation. And little by little, it started to change. The big thing that helped Volcker was in 1982, on August the 9th, that is when the bond market finally bottomed. And from there, it's been going up ever since. That was at third. Well, we topped a couple years ago. So it was up 34 years uh, before it topped. So this is it. We'll be right back. 877. 927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted a chart of April hogs up here for a couple of different reasons. First of all, you'll see we had that ABCD come down at the 78% uh, level. That happened last week. Uh, you'll notice we had a very meager rally. We went from 72 bucks a pound up to uh, 76. We're trading a little below that right now, 73.70 as of Friday's close. But that's a very, very shallow rally uh, coming off of a 78% level. This is going to be really key to this week, folks because if we go below 72 cents in the hog market, this has got some real serious uh, movement to the downside because they're still having problems with this swine flu over in China. If you can believe anything coming out of any of these markets, and when I'm beginning to think that being a technician is a, is a real godsend, but uh, this shallow rally usually means that uh, you're either going to get another test down here at 72 or you're going to break it because if that was a major low down there at 72, you should have gone more than, uh, you know, just a few cents. Look what happened in August when you had the major low. You rallied from 68, you know, all the way up to 80. You rallied 8 cents. Look look at the rally back in September. You know, you went limit up one day. And so this is telling you that maybe this cycle low is not good, but, you, but it still could be as long as we stay above 72. That's the that's the way we look at it from a technical basis. I hope that helps, but that's the way I'm looking at the hog market. I don't trade hogs very often, but when but when I do, <laughs> that's what I look at. Now we had a couple of requests to uh, take a look at charts, and one of course is the uh, the Bitcoin. We want to get it up here and take a look at it. Oh, Marshall, you have no idea about the heavy thunderstorms in Tucson. Marshall, it was shaking the house at 1 o'clock in the morning, and then again uh, this morning at around 4. Uh, and, and I'm you know, usually I'm awake during those hours, but I have finally broken, I believe, my my sleep problem of not being able to sleep. And now I'm sleeping seven and eight hours. I slept nine hours last night, and that is very, very unusual for me. And the reasoning is, is that they found out that I had a vitamin D deficiency. And once I started to take some of this vitamin D, it certainly helped my sleeping quite a bit. So I hope it's on the, I don't feel a whole lot, well, I feel more refreshed of course, but I'm not used to uh, sleeping that long. I'm only getting about half the stuff done that I'd like to get done. So, But I'm doing better. But I'm surprised because this morning at 4, we were having another big storm coming through. There were two of them, but it was really, really heavy. I mean, it was uh, not only heavy rain, but very, very heavy thunder with just a tiny bit of lightning, but uh, it was very, very powerful. That's very unusual here. Uh, in December. We get some in February and a lot during, you know, the monsoon season. That's during uh, June, July, August, and September. We rain every day, but just a short period of time. Okay, let's move on here to take a look at a couple of things that I, which I showed the Bitcoin. I believe that Bitcoin is still going to be working lower. I'm not sure uh, whether these cryptocurrencies have a future, but I think that they do because, you know, I, I talk all, every day, at least an hour a day with uh, John Jameson, and he certainly thinks that they do. And so we're keeping an eye on some of these in case one of them pops up that looks like it has a really good chance. We have four or five of them in the, uh, on the uh, horizon to look at. But uh, not right now. They haven't moved very much. So when they start to move with a little bit of volatility, I'll bring it forward to you and let you take a, take a look at it. Now, another someone that's asked a question uh, over the weekend, and I had one of my good friends from, uh, from Osaka send me a really nice chart. We'll get this up here. 
and take a look at it. This happens to be the uh, the Nikkei. Uh, you'll notice that we've completed a massive uh, ABCD pattern up there at 23,800, and uh, I don't know if it's going to measure down there to 18,600, but we should have a pretty good correction from this, uh, no matter what. Remember, folks, that the Nikkei topped on the Christmas Eve, excuse me, New Year's Eve, uh, December the uh, 29th of 19. Uh, 89 at 39,800. It didn't quite get to 40,000. And from 40,000, it went all the way down, bottoming in 2001, I believe, at around 2000, that early 2000, uh, one, two, three, somewhere in that ballpark. At, uh, it bottomed at roughly, I believe, 6,700 is where it finally uh, bottomed, and it's been you know, working its way higher yet. We haven't even made major 61% uh, retracements in the Nikkei during that time. And of course, the Nikkei is controlled by the Japanese government now because they buy almost all the stuff that comes out, if that's possible, but that's how they do it. So anyway, that's what we're taking a look at this morning. I wanted to uh, share with you uh, one other chart that I think will be uh, relatively important. And if I can find it, if I can find it, oh, here it comes. Just a second here. We'll get it right up here. It's going to be one of the old fang stocks. I want to get this up here. This is the big, uh, the big uh, daddy rabbit of all the fang stocks. Uh, this is Apple. You'll see we're almost at the 1.27 expansion of that move. Uh, that was up around. That comes in around 271 or something like that. We got to 270.71. Uh, this is a weekly chart, too, folks. So uh, sometime up in here. Now, I thought that around the 245 to 250 level that we were going to see a top in Apple. And they said, I'm going to teach you a lesson on this one because we are going to go higher. And, of course, it kept going higher that week, closing at 250. And that's when you knew you, you don't have to risk more than a few dollars when they go beyond these points. Like if you're looking at Apple at uh, 272, at 276, you're wrong. And stop and think. You're only risking $4 on a $270 stock. That's the whole purpose of these patterns, folks. The ABCDs, the Gartleys, the Butterflies, the 135 patterns, you know, all of those, the three drive to a top, three drive to a bottom, all of those are based on risk control. Uh, it's not trying to predict a top or anything like that. Those are based on risk control parameters that you can say, yes, there's a pattern here, but maybe it's going to work and maybe it's not. Yeah, and you can do it without being right a whole lot. I mean, Tom is an incredibly successful, Tom Hugard's an incredibly successful trader. He's only right 30% of the time. You know, and at 50%, you can do good. So, you know, those are some of the things that you have to learn. But there again, you got to get to that old thing commitment because you got to learn to do this. And, you know, it's not an easy business, but like Mark Douglas said, trading is simple, but it's not easy. So those are very good. Uh, uh, David, what is this comment you made? Those above six feet five living past 80. Is that true? Are there statistics on that? Because I know Bill Russell's a lot older than that. And he's seven foot tall. Uh, really? Wow. I, hey, David, when you get a chance, send me those stats because... Uh, I'm six foot four and three quarters, so I guess I'm. Oh wait, that's my width. Uh, sorry about that. I got that wrong. David, send me those uh, stats on that, or, or post them in the room if you get a chance, David, because I would really like to uh, to see those stats of living uh, people that are very tall. Because, uh, well, I still have some. I don't have anybody that tall as friends, but anyway, that's uh, that's very interesting. Hmm. I didn't know that statistic of is is the same true of left-handed people. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, go to a retirement home and see how many big guys are there. Hey, Jay, I can make it easier than that. Just go to the retirement home and see how many how many men are there. There are very, very, very few of them because women outlive us, uh, you know, quite a bit. So, um, and they should. Okay, let's move on here to a couple other uh, things that I wanted to mention here. We'll take a little break, 877-927-6648. in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. 
The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the most, well, there's two bearish ones. The Amazon looks bearish, very bearish. And also the uh, FANG stock of uh, Netflix looks very, very bearish. Both of those of those five FANG stocks are the ones that look uh, the most bearish. But Netflix is certainly bearish. Uh, Google's still looking bullish because we made a new high. We probably, if, the, if that is making a double top, you know, I don't know for sure. But here's one that I think that if you like patterns and and I do, and here we are in the Christmas season where Amazon should be absolutely blowing the socks off everything, and it isn't. Let's just get this chart up because this will show you a really interesting chart. Let's get this up here, and then we'll get to the ones I know that you want to hear about. You'll see here that this particular move that we're seeing here, we've had the ABCD structure uh, making all it could do from the July high during this whole time was make a 382 retracement up there at 18 and a quarter. We're now down $75. Uh, 1751. Anything below 17 and a quarter says that this thing could actually get down to $1,500, and that's just a 78% retracement of the low from December. So I, uh, I'm just giving you the charts as we see it, but that's uh, that's what we're looking at. You know, let's see what is that? What's going on? Hmm. Okay, it says basketball players in the NBA have a 12-year less life expectancy than the average male. Does that – well, that means – well, almost all those players are bigger than 6'5". I imagine the average height – well, let's not get into that, Steph. Uh, thank you very, very for posting this, uh, David, because I think it's uh, – David, I don't know how you do it. I actually, you know, I know they call you Super Dave, but my gosh, I have never seen anybody with such an access of information that that comes to your fingertips like this, David. I'm I'm just absolutely totally impressed. So, that's it. 
Holy moly guacamole. Anyway, that's what's going on here. Okay. I think a lot of longevity is based in DNA. My great-grandmother lived to be 103. My grandfathers were uh, were in their 90s. And my, my parents died young because they were both heavy smokers, but I had a lot of longevity on my side, so hopefully I got a few more few more uh, uh, rounds around the race track, but we'll see how that's going. Okay, let's move on to the next one here, the old bell-shaped curve. You got that right. All right, let's move on to one other one that I wanted to show you. Someone's asked a question about, and that was the Google. You'll notice here that we've went up and we've uh, made new highs now with these big gaps. We had a big gap last uh, Tuesday, and we had another one on Friday, so we've up to that ABCD pattern. It finally completed that big ABCD. BCD pattern completed at 1340 in the uh, in the Google. If in fact this ABCD is correct, and I'm not even sure that it is, but that's what we're watching. So far this morning, we're having a, had a little bit of a rally here. We got back to uh, 13 3147 in the S&P. So that's going to be an interesting one to watch. Uh, we had a really strong rally here in the Nasdaq just a few minutes ago. We went from uh, 80 8380 all the way up to 8423 40 handles. So that's having a pretty good run. So those are a few of them that we're looking at uh, this morning here. Uh, the bonds are still up, but they've sold off quite a bit. So we're going to be able to see if that, in fact, is going to be uh, something that is going to be interesting uh, for these things as we look at. The natural gas, we will just get you a quick update here on the natural gas. I'm going to do this to show you what we're looking at here in natural gas. This is the, uh, the AI uh, artificial intelligence uh, program that we use to try to find these uh, highs and lows for the day. You'll notice that uh, we're looking for a potential bottom that could have come in here at around the 221 level. And uh, what I would do if I were looking at natural gas, and I am, is I would look at the time of, you'll see at 11.16 there on the bottom. That's that time frame. We're right around 9.46 uh, right now. But looking around 11.15, you'll see that down move. Watch that down move, folks, because what we try to do is when we're looking at this is we know that this is, should be a key time. It's based on a time vibration, has nothing to do with price. Those red lines that you see, folks, have zero to do with price, nothing at all. They're all related to time, and it's a, it's a, it's a vibration based on harmony and uh, from music and stuff like that. But watch that time at 11.16, because if this is good, we should be either making a low or a high at that time. Now, if it's making a high, this thing is going to be inverted, and then you'll, you'll have to expect it the other way. But this is just today, just for an experiment. We'll watch this at 11.16. Tomorrow, we'll, we'll bring it up to date just to see how it did, and then we'll, uh, we'll move on from that level. But we should be um, probably making some new lows down here at around 11.16. Remember, we left a huge gap here. Let's see if we can show that gap here uh, this morning. Yes, we can. Let's just get this up here to show you the big gap, and you'll see that 1.27 level that we were watching here. Hold on one second. There we get this up here. There, you'll see that uh, there's the gap that we had. You can see that we've really done very little. We went from 216 up to 225. You know, we rallied, well, it's 900 bucks, but now we're trading at uh, 221. So you want to be watching that to see if it's going to. Uh, See if it's going to mean anything or not. So that's what we're keeping an eye on this morning as we look at these things. And we have another request for taking a look at one of our favorite commodities. And if you'll give me a second, I'll get it up here and take a look at it. And that is the corn. We'll get the old corn up here and we'll take a look at that. And we are what I believe. And remember now, folks, we're supposed to. This is what's really hilarious is because we are supposed to be talking about. Hold on one second here. This is not a good thing to do. I hit the wrong button and we've got the uh, let's get there we go. Get this up here. Here's the corn. Uh, we're down. We hit the 78% retracement uh, a week or a week about 10 days ago. We're down there again around 376. If we go below 376 folks, that's not going to be good. That means we're going to be looking at a double bottom or lower at a 365. Now remember, this is happening at the same time this is happening at the same time that we're going to be watching at the uh, 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 this, I just lost, lost my train of thought. 
this is happening at the same time when these tariff things are supposed to be coming, uh, uh, you know, due on Friday. Now, if they're really close to a, a deal, these corn people, I think these uh, these folks would know this stuff. These farmers, and they're they're not they're not you know getting any uh, help. So this is not telling us that these things in China. And I believe me, I don't believe anything that these people tell us. I mean, remember eight weeks ago. Uh, they told us that this is all done. Yeah, we're all ready to go. And look where we've been eight weeks. I'm up and down, up and down, up and down. Who knows? Oh, we've got the FOMC meeting coming in this week, too, between the 10th and 11th. So all of that is going to be really interesting. Folks, I want to make a little comment here. Uh, we are coming into an area. We've been up for 10 years, folks. We started on March the 5th of 2009. We're in the 10th year of a, the biggest bull market in the history of the stock market. Someday it's going to turn down. And... Um, uh, I, I hope that uh, we're going to be ready for it. I, I've got some things in the plan for 2020 that I think you're going to that I think you're going to be like. It's going to be related to, uh, you know, pattern recognition, of course, and artificial intelligence. No fundamentals in all, involved at all, but it'll be based on some low risk entries and stuff. The things that I'm watching, and it'll be more aggressive, I believe. Uh, part of the factor that we I've worked out uh, looking at Tom's work, and I've really followed what he's done over the past couple of years, looking at the patterns and stuff, and I can see where his big uh, his big wins have come from. And I really think that we can utilize that in finding some very, very low risk uh, trading opportunities. So we want to keep that in mind. So uh, that's it. Let's uh, get right back to work here after we take a little break. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I've posted the chart for the gold uh, as it was Friday. You'll notice that that 78% level uh, that closed at 1464.50, the 78% level was at 1464. The low last night on Sunday was 1463.80. And we've rallied about uh, $8 off of that low. As long as we can stay above that, gold's got a chance. But below that, folks, it's got a really big chance to make that big ABCD pattern all the way down at 1380 That would be down $180 from the high, which would represent the strongest correction we've had in this three-year-old bull market. I would be a strong buyer down there if we ever get to that price, but this is where we stand in the gold market. Also, if you take the 24-7 newsletter, take a look at the chart of platinum. It's actually holding up relatively well, much higher than those lows. And also, the silver uh, really broke down below the lows of November the uh, 8th. And, of course, we didn't follow through over on the downside. I don't know if it was related to gold or not, but uh, silver still looks like it wants to drop another 70 cents uh, to the downside. The key level to watch today in the gold market is we get above the um – uh, 1473 uh, level, that would be the first indication that you've got a chance to uh, see the market move uh, a little bit uh, little bit higher. But right now, it's in a bearish formation, mainly because of that 382 ABCD pattern that completed last week that we, we highlighted that so many times at 1490 because it was 61% retracement, 38% retracement, and it took two weeks to form it. So that was really a strong indication that that was going to be an intermediate high, and so far that has been the case. Any move above 1490, folks, would certainly uh, take this last uh, target that we're looking at down at 1380 and uh, throw it into the wind because that means that this thing would be going a lot higher. Remember, folks, we topped back in September. We were down three months. Well, we're all we're, yeah, we're down through September, October, November. We're down three months, and uh, this is a pretty big correction long term. But you know, we've only backed off one. Uh, 100 bucks, so 120. 877 927 6648. See you on the flip side.